So previously we just saw what are linear systems of equations. Okay, so at this point we are able to recognize uh, a linear system of equations is essentially um, a number of equations with several unknowns um, and together they form a system of equations. The objective, what is the objective once we have identified a linear system of equations? The objective is to solve uh, these systems of these linear systems of equations. So we want to look at to start with what do we mean by the word by the term solution? What does that mean uh, as far as a linear system is concerned? Well if you remember if you will recall recall we just saw that a linear system has n unknowns and the n unknowns were x1, x2, x3 up to xn uh, and we had m equations. Uh, a solution to a system of equations is essentially finding these unknowns. So what is x1, what is x2 and so on till xn. Now it is important to understand that a solution we cannot have 90 percent of the unknowns found. That is not a solution to a linear system of equations. A linear system of equations, the solution, what we talk, what we call a solution to a linear system of equations, is all the unknowns must be found. If all the unknowns are not found, it may even one unknown is missing, it is possible that that unknown is uncalculable, or it doesn't satisfy all the equations. And as such, um, there cannot be a solution to the linear system. So it is very important, it is imperative, that we keep in mind that when we talk about the solution of a linear system of equations, we're talking about finding all the unknowns. It is not good enough to find 9 out of 10 of them. It is useless, in fact. We have to have all 10. Now, when, it, when we talk about a solution, there are actually three types of solutions, three possibilities. So what are the possible solutions? Let's have a look at uh, that. First of all, uh, the first one of the possibilities is that we end up with a unique solution. Okay, a unique solution. Now, let me uh, also mention that when we say unique solution, uh, what do I mean by that? So I, I'm going to give you examples of all the different possibilities in a second, but let's just have a look at uh, the uh, the first of the possibilities, which is a unique solution. The second possibility is that there is and there are infinitely many solutions. So there are infinitely many solutions to the linear system of equations. Okay, infinitely many solutions. And the last one is there is no solution. Okay, so now let's let's get in uh, a little bit more detail as to what we mean by uh, these three possibilities. Now I'm, I'm going to show you quickly with um, an example where we're looking at a two by two system which is two unknowns and two equations and I'll do all three uh, cases for you so you can clearly see what I'm talking about. So let's do um, an example of one of these possibilities. Um, here's a system a 2 by 2 system x plus 2y equals 3 and 3x minus 2y equals 5. So if we solve the system of equations it's um, let's continue with the elimination uh, method not the substitution I'm not going to use substitution so that gives us 4x equals 8 so x equals 2 substitute that into one of the other equations and it implies that y is going to be a half. So we've got a solution. Now I'll mention here that the solution can be written as 2 and 1 over 2. This is called an ordered pair, something that you should be quite familiar with at this stage. An ordered pair. There are ordered triples uh, which you would have seen in uh, 3D, three dimensions, and then the, and, and, and ordered n-tuples. Okay, I'm not going to talk too much about them right now, uh, but they do connect uh, the ordered pairs and uh, idea connects it back to vectors it also connects it back to uh, matrices uh, so this is a unique solution we call this a unique solution all right there is a unique value um, of x and y a unique pair uh, okay and it's the only one that satisfies uh, the two 
um, equations. Uh, let's look at this one. x plus 2y. So I'm going to alter the system slightly. So the first equation is the same, but the second equation I'm going to change it to this. Now, when I try to attempt to solve this equation, I will most like well, what is logical is to multiply the top equation, say, by 2, and then subtract. And you'll see what happens is everything cancels, and we're left with here, so we're left with 0 equals 0. Now, this situation is interpreted as um, that both equations are, in fact, satisfied by any uh, a combination of x and um, oh, well many combinations not any sorry many combinations of x and y's will satisfy the equation uh, the two equations so we say there this is this is interpreted as there are infinitely many solutions okay so for instance i can uh, choose a value of, uh, like let let y equal 1 if I let y equal 1 then x is equal to um, 1 as well okay x is equal to 1 y equals 1 and you can substitute it in here you'll see there's 1 plus 2 is 3 and here 2 plus 4 is 6 so it satisfies the equation so 1 1 is one solution now if I let x equal 2 for instance okay uh, sorry y equal 2 for the sake of argument then I'll end up with x equals minus 1 okay so if y equals 2 um, then x equals minus 1 here's the second solution you will see it satisfies the equation as well and I can continue to keep selecting values of y substituting them into any one of these two equations and finding the value of x and it will always satisfy both equations at the same time so this is how what I mean by there can be an infinity of solutions I can I have just shown you two here and this list can just continue on we can keep selecting values and keep finding more and more solutions okay so that is an example of what we mean by when we say infinitely many solutions let's move on to the third possibility and for this one uh, this is the example that I want to show this is also again I'm going to choose a system that is quite similar in fact the first equation is the same but for the second equation, I'm going to use a different system. Okay. And again, I'll proceed by elimination. So I'll multiply the top equation by 2. And then we subtract. But this is what happens this time. These cancel. But what I'm left with is this situation. I'm left with 0 equals minus 5. Now that's an inconsistent or nonsensical situation. It doesn't make sense. Zero cannot, there's no balance here. That means the there is no solution. So the equations will never be balanced by values of x and y. It is impossible to find values of x and y that say that the system is inconsistent. So we say system is inconsistent and there is no solution. Okay, there's no solution to the system of equations. So this is uh, basically a quick interpretation. Now what I'm going to do on this side quickly is it is possible and it is this is of course a very limited um, sort of si a situation where we can we can interpret or we can interpret the these three solutions because they are small systems. I mean this is only a two by two system. So if I look at the first one for instance and I'll quickly draw it here very quickly draw it here approximately so here's the line approximately x plus 2y equals 3 and this is approximate I want to just do it quickly just to give you an idea and the other one will be say around something like this okay and there's your intersection point and that intersection point in fact is uh, 2 half now you can do this accurately and find out uh, that this in fact is how uh, is what results like this this equation here is 3x minus 2y equals 5 so the two lines intersect so what i'm saying is a unique solution is is identified by this point of intersection that the lines only intersect in one point and there is therefore one solution in a similar way and the second situation is like this 
if you look at the equation here, the equation is something like approximately like this. And the other equation, I'm going to change the color, is right on top of it. So, so these equations are on top of each other. Therefore, they, have, they are intersecting at an infinite number of points. So therefore, there are infinitely uh, many solutions. And the last case okay, can be interpreted graphically as follows. Here's the, I mean, it's the same equation as above, so approximately the same. But the other one is parallel to it. So these are, sorry, it didn't look, they don't really look parallel, but they're supposed to be parallel. So these are two parallel lines, which means they never intersect each other. So there are no points of intersection. So this is the no solution um, solution. This is infinitely uh, many solutions. And this is unique solution. So these are the three interpretations. But as I said, clearly you can see that uh, it is possible to visualize uh, uh, up to three equations, three unknowns and three equations, because we are um, graphically would be in three dimensions, in 3D, and then we're looking at planes, in fact. So the equations x plus y plus z, uh, or ax plus by plus cz, uh, these set of equations, three equations, for instance, could be three planes that are intersecting each other. Now, that's very difficult to draw. I'm not going to do that, but you will be able to find a visualization of that in most textbooks. However, please keep in mind we are not interested in this two and three. Uh, sorry, a two by two or a three by three system. We are infinite. We are interested in an n by n system. Once we go beyond three unknowns, it is not possible uh, to graphically visualize um, intersections and uh, sorry, what have you, uh, solutions unique, whether they are unique or infinite. So, uh, I would ask you to. Keep this in mind because you have done this before, but it is not important for this course. It is simply a piece of knowledge that you have, but it is very limited a tool because we are not practically going to be interested in this. Although exam questions will be for three by three systems, perhaps not two by two, but mostly three by three systems. But still, um, uh, it is not um, you know it is not a requirement. It is, it is not important for you to keep these these visualizations in mind because they are limited to only. Uh, three by three systems. Okay, so that's all I want to say about the types of solutions and the possibilities of solutions. Uh, next, we will begin in the next lecture, we will start with um, actually solving systems of equations. But before we get to that, we need to actually start looking at systems and connecting them to uh, representing them in matrix form. So that will be the next topic. Thank you.